Hi everyone! Today we are up in my sewing room to tackle a tutorial for a quilt that I had long thought was never going to see the light of day. I pieced this quilt about a year ago and it was fussy cut stripes and I had a lot of fun with it. I initially thought that I was going to write a pattern but it was just too much to put into words and pictures for a written pattern because so much depended on the fabric you were using and so I finished the top, put it on the back burner, and forgot about it until it came up in my UFO challenge for my local guild. So I quilted it, finished it, and put it up on Instagram and everybody loved it. So I thought that we would finally tackle this in a video format where it's so much easier to show you what I did to uh, get these stripes to all line up. So we're going to move over to the cutting table and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about fabric selection and then we're going to get to cutting. So before I get started cutting my fabric, which I am using the Tula Pink All Stars kind of tent stripe fabric, which is a two color stripe with about a half an inch stripe repeat. Let's talk about some fabrics that won't work well for this. Now, this is a two color stripe, but the stripe lines are like an eighth of an inch, maybe even smaller. Uh, this might be like a sixteenth of an inch, but this would be so difficult to line up um, both during the cutting as well as during the piecing that it just it would be too difficult to make work correctly to get the effect that we're going for with this quilt. Now here's another one that will not work even though the stripes are a bit bigger. Now if you notice this goes from pink to purple and then from pink to purple again. And what you really need is more of a mirror image stripe. So this has, um, if I were to cut, so if I were to just look at kind of this section, you can see it's like blue, green, blue. And even if I go wider, like it's a mirror image, like there's a center stripe and then it works out from there. This fabric doesn't give you that. So you won't get the same effect working with this fabric. With a fabric like this, you are not gonna get this kind of box in a box effect because you're not gonna have that mirror image uh, pattern like you do with a more simple stripe. So with that out of the way, let's concentrate on this Tula Pink fabric since I'm very familiar with it. It's what I chose to make the original quilt out of. So for every color of fabric that you choose, you are gonna get two blocks. You're gonna get the box in a box and you're gonna get kind of the cross, kind of all corners block. And that comes from, and to do that, we are gonna need to cut two identical squares of fabric out of this cut of fabric. Now this isn't quite a half yard, it's 16 and change. This will work with any size square that you want to make. Obviously, bigger, it's going to go a little bit faster. You're going to get a little bit more of the effect because there are more stripes involved. But you could do this with a fat quarter if you cut like two 10 inch or two nine and a half inch squares. So I'm using um, almost a half yard here to get nice big blocks, but the method will work with any size. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the selvage of this block. And I need to just pick a color stripe to begin with. Um, it doesn't matter which one. We will ultimately be trimming this block down as well. So this color isn't even guaranteed to end up anywhere special. Just pick a color. I'm going to pick this kind of lime green. And I am going to cut as close as I can along the line between the lime and the blue. So now that I have this stripe established, since we know our fabric is about 16 inches wide, that's kind of the limiting factor of how big of a square we can make. It can't be bigger than 16 inches. So let's measure down our fabric and see where our stripes kind of land. Now we want to have a square or a cut of fabric that begins and ends with the same color stripe. So I'm looking for somewhere on my ruler that is within 16 inches 
but also lands on a yellow, on a that lime stripe. Now, if I went to this lime stripe, we're just a little bit over 16 inches, and I'm not real confident on this on how straight these side cuts are, that it's exactly 16 inches all the way down. So I'm gonna back off and make this lime stripe my final stripe in this cut. And it's just a little over 15 inches. So we're still gonna get like a nice big block. So my second cut is to cut the other side of this piece of fabric and I want it to include the same color stripe that it ended with. So there is our first piece. So for now, we are gonna set this aside and we are gonna do the same thing again. So I'm gonna cut off this blue stripe because I want these to be identical. So I want both pieces of fabric to begin and end with that bright lime stripe. So let's trash that little blue skinny stripe. And then I like to count the stripes in the first piece. There are 16 lime stripes. So I'm gonna count the same number over here. And now I'm gonna make the second cut for this piece of fabric on the outside of that lime stripe. And then the rest of this cut of fabric is um, for your scrap or if you wanna make a scrappy binding, but I'm just gonna toss it off out of the way for right now. Now we have two pieces of fabric that are the same length in one dimension, but they're not squares yet. So we are gonna stack these and align those stripes as well as we possibly can. Now I'm not worried about these raw edges being aligned. I'm worried about this stripe pattern being aligned. I want a blue stripe on top of a blue stripe and a lime stripe on top of a lime stripe so that if I am to peel this back, this stripe would, would line up so that these stripes would line up from fabric to fabric. Just, just going back and forth and adjusting it as well as I can. And I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get. So now we need to measure exactly how tall our piece is. Because remember, we were cutting based on the stripe location, not any specific measurement. So I'm measuring from the edge of the fabric here, this cut, to the cut down here. And it is 15 and 1 8 inches. So that's the measurement we're gonna use. Now, even if you are using the exact same fabric I am, and the same number of stripes that I am, your measurement might be a little bit different. And that's just because of the way fabric is printed and inconsistencies. Like, I have this other colorway from this same line. You can see I'm aligning the stripes here, but you can see how far off they are down here. And that is just because there may be just a, a teeny little bit difference in the stripe width from color to color or from printing to printing that makes these stripes all different. So you need to cut each color separately for this quilt. So now that we have our 15 and an eighth inch measurement, we are going to cut this dimension of our square to 15 and an eighth so that we end up with a perfect square. So now we have two identical 15 and 1 8 inch squares. To turn these into the kind of optical illusion blocks, we are gonna cut them on the diagonal. So we are gonna go from corner to corner and I'm aligning both my ruler and the fabric visually 
but I am also using this 45 degree angle as kind of a double check. I want that 45 degree line on my ruler to align with the edge of the fabric. And then I'm gonna make one clean cut from corner to corner. Now I'm gonna gently pick up my ruler and it's time to cut the other direction. Now, cutting towards yourself is something that I try to never do. It's dangerous. So if you have a table that you can um, walk around or if you have a cutting mat that you can twist so that you're not cutting towards yourself, definitely do that. Or if you're working with smaller blocks and you have a rotating cutting mat, um, that would be ideal. I don't have any of those and my cutting mat is, it's gigantic, it's the size of my table. So I'm just gonna step all the way over to the side as far as I can and make this cut so that I'm as safe as possible. Just take your time, make that final cut. And that is all the cutting we're gonna do for these blocks. So now we have four triangles. These two triangles have the stripes going horizontal to the long side. These two triangles have the stripes going perpendicular to the longest side. So we're going to separate these triangles. These two will be paired together and these two will be paired together. So this is why we cut two identical squares because now we have a set of four that will come together to create the box in a box layout. And then we have four triangles that will come together to create, I don't know, what do you call this? Like the all corners block, the X block, whatever you wanna call it. You have two matching, but kind of inverse blocks here. So that's the only two blocks in the quilt and they're all gonna be cut with the same method. So now all that's left is to sew them together. <laughs> and I say that's all there's left because this is a tricky part of assembling this quilt because these are all bias edges. And although we aligned our fabrics as well as we could for cutting, there's still gonna be just a little bit of uh, fudging here and there. So we are gonna sew these together in pairs of triangles like this, and then we will sew this long seam. So when you fold these together, right sides together, you wanna take your time to align this edge and you wanna take some care to not stretch that bias edge. I wanna just do a close up of matching these, these stripes along this seam. So this is the seam we need to sew. And I'm starting in the center and aligning those stripes along that edge where you can kind of see the color reveal along the cut line. Now, if your stripes are not exactly aligning, then this is one of those times when using the power of this bias edge will allow you see like, this one is just a little bit off. I'm just gonna shift it just a thread and that bias edge will allow me to do that the, the stretchiness of that edge. Usually you want to avoid stretching your fabric, but in this case, we're just so slightly shifting it to get the effect we want from these blocks. So now I have that all pinned and I am ready to sew these seams with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just taking my time with the seam and I'm being very ginger with it because this is a bias seam. I don't want to hold it down to kind of stretch it out or you'll kind of create a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve that will end up being kind of a hump in your final top. You wanna to be really ginger with it and you're just guiding it through the machine.
I don't always sew with my stiletto, but for little fussy triangle bits like that, I do like to guide it, guide it through the machine with my stiletto because I don't want to sew over my finger. And I also don't want to um, distort that outer corner at all. So a stiletto can come in really handy. If you don't have one, they're worth, uh, they're worth keeping by your machine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the rest of the pieces together. Okay, it's time to press these units and we're gonna do so very gingerly because again, these are bias. So even though there's a line of stitching in there to secure them, I still like to treat them very gingerly. So I'm gonna press and then while it's still warm, I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of establish that seam. And then I can go back in with my iron and press it flat. And then flip it over and I'm gonna press open. And there is our half a square unit. You can see how taking the time to pin all those intersections has really paid off. Our stripes are aligning really nicely. So I'm gonna press the final few units and then we will sew those last couple seams. So I have the two half a blocks that go together here and I'm just going to flip them right side together. And now I'm gonna repeat that pinning process starting from the center. I want that center to be nice aligned. And then I'm gonna move outward and align all those stripes along the edge. I'm not usually a prolific pinner, but when I'm working on this kind of thing where matching these little spots is so important, then I will use a lot of pins. And I don't think there's anything wrong with using a lot of pins. I think a lot of quilters are like, oh, I don't pin, I'm so advanced. But ultimately you want your final quilt to look perfect, right? So it doesn't really matter how you get there. Like you're not gonna put on the label, I did this whole quilt and I didn't use any pins. It's more important that it just looks good in the end and that you're happy in your process. So here's another spot where my stripes I'm just gonna shift just a thread along that bias edge to get these stripes to line up perfectly. And that is that. So now I'm gonna sew this final long seam and press open the block. So now I'm gonna repeat that same process with this other block and it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna start from the center and pin our way out, making sure all these stripes align. Okay, let's sew our last two seams for these blocks and see how they turn out. So here are our final blocks. They are all sewn together and um, then pressed. I pressed them the same way, that final seam, the same way as I did the, the first two triangles that we sewed together. I pressed it very carefully and then pressed it open just to um, reduce bulk. I always press open. So you can press to the side if you would like, if that's your thing. Now, as I said, you can get two kind of coordinating blocks from each with a fabric or piece of fabric that you use. But once you finish with your set of blocks, set them to the side until you have finished all of your blocks. Because as we said before, remember when we lined this fabric up with the stripes that we were using and see how they line up and then they start to get off? That means that your squares that you cut from each color might be slightly different sized. And it might be an eighth of an inch, it might be a half of an inch, but these squares that you create each color might be just slightly different sized. So make all your blocks and then cut them down to one uniform size. Square them up to, let's see, this one is, these blocks are about 14 inch square raw, so 13 and a half inch finished but I might trim them all down to 
13 and 3 quarters so that all the blocks that I make for a quilt will fit together. So that's just going to be your judgment there at the end to um, make your blocks all uniform sized. So let's take just a moment here to talk about ultimate quilt size and fabric requirements because I use just one stripe fabric to make two blocks. So that doesn't really give you an idea of how large my quilt is. And my original quilt was made with much smaller squares. So let's do a little bit of math and figure out what size quilt you can make with half yards. So in my experience, the fabric I used in this demo was 16 inches wide, so it wasn't quite a full half yard cut. If you have a full half yard cut, you're probably going to end up with blocks that are around 16 and a half inches finished in your quilt. So if you have a 16.5 inch quilt and you do a 4x4 four four layout, you're going to end up with a 66 inch square quilt. You'll need 16 blocks, but remember you get two blocks from, from each half yard cut. So you will need eight half yards to make a 66 inch square quilt. Now, if you're not into square quilts, and um, I love a square quilt, but if you want to add two more half yards, you will end up with a four by five layout for 20 blocks, 10 fabrics, 10 half yards, you will end up with a roughly 66 by 82 inch quilt. So in addition to all the fabric we've talked about, either eight half yards or 10 half yards, depending on how big you want your quilt, you'll also need backing and binding fabric. So I always buy about a yard for binding. Um, I don't mind having leftover scraps. You can probably get away with a little bit less, maybe two thirds of a yard, but I always buy a yard. And backing, if you are going to do the 66 inch square quilt, then you will need about four yards of backing fabric if you're doing 42 inch wide uh, fabric. So maybe four and a quarter to be safe. So that's what you'll need to make a pretty good size quilt. So that's it for this tutorial. I know that there is a lot of like, it depends and you have to measure your fabric, but that's just kind of how working with stripes is because even the same color fabric on a different bolt might have a slightly different measurement. So you're gonna have to use your little quilty brain and uh, do your measurements and have a lot of fun with this because this is one of my favorite quilts that I've made and it's super dizzying and a lot of fun and um, I just had kind of a blast doing it. So I hope you enjoy it as well. And if you do, then tag me. Um, oh, I don't have a name for this. It's like a magic stripe quilt. Let's go with that. If you make your own magic stripe quilt, then um, tag me on Instagram or leave a comment below and um, I would love to come see it. So I hope you enjoy. Happy quilting.